After the end of World War II, American generals ordered engineers to construct a vehicle similar to that of the M24 Chafee tank, but with a more powerful gun. The first result was the M41 Walker Bulldog in the early 1950s. Because of its heavy weight, which affected its ability to support a parachute, there was dissatisfaction in its design. In May of 1952, the government requested the creation of a tank that would weigh 20 tons and come equipped with a 90mm gun. This request was later revised to have the vehicle weigh 18 tons with a 76mm gun. The following summer saw a large number of T-71 projects. Only three of the best projects were chosen, one of which would later be designated T-92. The other two designs were completely unique from one another. Cadillac proposed to use a more classic layout with four crew members. Detroit, on the other hand, designed their vehicle to have an oscillating turret with an autoloader and reduce the amount of crew to three. Unfortunately, due to financial problems, these designs never became a reality, and the projects were closed in January of 1956. In reality, the T-71 was nothing more than some blueprints and a model. Technical Characteristics We'll judge the tactical and technical characteristics of the T-71 and compare it with other Tier 7 light tanks. A score of 10 will be rated best, while a score of 1 will be considered low. Hull traverse speed is 54 degrees per second, while the turret speed is 40 degrees per second. The T-71 speed limit is 64 kilometers per hour. Its view range is 400 meters, which is a great range for a light tank. Aiming time is 2.3 seconds. The dispersion is 0.38 meters when fired at a distance of 100 meters. Penetration by a standard shell is 175 millimeters. Alpha damage, 150. Its armor is 25 millimeter at its thickest point, making the T-71 vulnerable to high explosive shells. In addition, this vehicle only has 850 hit points. One of the main features of the T-71 is its autoloader, allowing it to deal up to 900 damage in just a few seconds. The reloading time takes roughly two seconds, but the loading time of the entire drum takes 20 seconds. Like many other light tanks, the pros of the T-71 are its maneuverability, view range, and its accurate gun with an autoloader. Its cons are thin armor and a small amount of hit points. The T-71 excels on open maps, yet can also be effective on city maps thanks to its maneuverability and great gun. The T-71's excellent maneuverability allows it to drive circles around enemy tanks, causing them fits. Like most American tanks, the T-71 has a great vertical elevation angle. This allows it to shoot at enemies by peeking its turret over cover. The autoloader gives the T-71 a great opportunity to keep dangerous enemies without tracks for several seconds, or by shooting at enemies' fuel tanks to set them ablaze. One of the most important and effective tactics when playing as a T-71 is to distract other enemy tanks from shooting at allies. That's just one of the small tactics that can have a huge impact on the battlefield and help teams achieve victory. It's better to avoid close quarter duels with tanks of the same class, since the T-71's low HP doesn't allow it to survive long in these types of encounters. The T-71 is ideal at shooting enemies from a distance of 50 or 100 meters. From this distance, it'll find its gun to be much more accurate against tanks of the same class. If it's not possible to retreat during a close encounter, try to time attacks in between an enemy's reloading time. In some cases, it might even be better to ram the enemy. When attacking, remember the basic strategy of shooting armor vehicles from the sides and rear, not the front, where armor is typically the strongest. If the opportunity presents itself when fighting a higher tier enemy, unload an entire drum of ammo into their sides or rear, and then run away into cover while reloading to get ready for another attack. Equipping a T-71 with the following gear will allow it to have a very aggressive playstyle on the battlefield, coated optics, vertical stabilizer, and crew ventilation. 
Whereas if the T-71 is equipped with a camouflage net, binocular telescope, and crew ventilation, that sets it up to be more of a passive participant on the field. As for crew skills, the following is the most effective. When listed as a top-tier tank when playing on a closed map like Himmelsdorf, it's important to take the central square. This allows the T-71 to scout enemy vehicles in their base and then retreat to the railway. It's important to play aggressively and without mercy. If the enemy push past the seventh line, proceed to their base and capture it while destroying any artillery in the surrounding area. If the enemy capture the hill, determine if it's more effective to guard or attack the enemy base, taking into account the location and number of remaining allies. When listed as a low-tier vehicle, play cautiously, knowing that a single shot from any enemy tank will destroy the T-71. So once the center of the map has been successfully scouted, retreat and guard the base. Keep an eye on the mini-map and the location of allies. If possible, assist in attacking along the flanks or eliminating artillery placements. In addition, remember to avoid heavy tanks whenever possible. If enemies rush the second and third lines, attack enemies through the spaces between buildings and continue spotting enemy locations to assist allies. If there are a lot of self-propelled guns, scout from the center of the map and when secure, locate and destroy enemy artillery locations that are typically located at A0. When playing on other city maps like Ansk, drive through the fifth line and once enemy tanks are spotted, retreat to the open greenery. Whereas when on Runeberg, scout enemies in the city and continue to hide behind buildings. When playing on an open map and listed as the top tier vehicle, many different tactics are available. We'll use Redshire as an example. Get involved in the battle, move fast, spot enemy tanks, and if possible, open fire. If one of the flanks begins to be pushed by enemy forces, don't attack them head on. It's better to use the T-71's accurate gun and work on attacking some of the most dangerous targets from a distance. Remember the weak armor of the T-71, so be sure to keep moving to avoid being hit by enemy shells. If allies capture G5, scout for enemy tanks located on the one line by driving through K1 to K2. If the enemy manages to get past the flank, retreat to K6 from where they can be scouted. If there are a lot of light tanks on the enemy team, hide behind the bush at G5. From there, it's possible to see the enemy hill along with the second and third lines. It's also possible to spot the side of the hill at D6 and D7 from this location, where most enemy scouts would be hiding. Keeping these enemy locations spotted will allow them to be destroyed by attentive allies. Playing as a low-tier vehicle on Redshire, hide behind bushes and passively scout enemies or drive through the riverbed to keep enemies spotted. Keep in mind that Allied artillery is not able to instantly aim on enemy tanks, so it might be necessary to keep these vehicles spotted for at least 15 seconds. Don't take any unnecessary risks, because it's better to continue spotting enemy locations than be a piece of scrap. If the main enemy forces are pushing through to the center of a map, proceed along their flank and take out the artillery. From there, attempt to capture the enemy base or assist allies on the attack. If enemies have broken through B9, attempt to engage in passive scouting to highlight enemy locations. This can be accomplished from the top of the hill or driving through the riverbed. There are some other techniques to take into account on the other open maps. On Malinovka, drive to bushes near the swamp or go to the hill in order to spot enemy locations. On fjords, remain hidden in the bushes on the hill and spot enemy scouts for allies. On highway, scout for enemy movement of enemy tanks along F4 to F5. Also, be sure to have a path of retreat and don't play recklessly. It's better to assist your allies than to venture off into enemy territory by yourself. We hope you found all this information helpful. Now it's time to apply these tips on the battlefield. Roll out!